So imagine finding this, you know, million dollar Countach in Venezuela, hidden away for 30 plus years, having to cover it, almost getting the car lost or stolen at the port, and then finding out it's probably one of the most famous Countaches of all time. So for the past year, we've been working on a very special black Countach. And I haven't shown this car on social media. I haven't shown this car on YouTube, maybe a, inside the service, uh, a, a brief look at this car. But this is one of the craziest stories that we have ever sort of captured. And um, this is the story of a lost Lamborghini Countach that ended up in Venezuela. So about four years ago, um, I was scrolling on Instagram one night and I noticed there was a, uh, someone had tagged the Lamborghini Countach in a photo. There was this really cool looking black gold wheel tan interior Countach and it had these lower rockers. And you know, I just being the inquisitive guy that I am, I actually reached out um, immediately to the, the person that posted the photo and I said, where is the car? What can you tell me? You know, how many miles is it for sale? Um, and I basically got a response from a really nice gentleman and basically told me it was his father's car and that the car had 6,000 kilometers and it had been in Venezuela uh, since like 1989 or 1990. And I was like, basically like, holy. I did not know there was a Lamborghini Countach in Venezuela. And um, I know in the past, uh, in the 1980s and 1990s, uh, Venezuela was one of the richest countries in the world and it was a mecca for incredible cars. There was a 355 Challenge Series, there was a 250 TR, there was Muras, there was all these really, really special cars in Venezuela. Um, and, you know, not to get into politics or whatever, but, you know, obviously, uh, their government's gone a different way and, 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 and the country is in a different place today. And I, I pray for the people of Venezuela and I hope that things will change over time. Uh, but right now I think things are very rough um, in Venezuela uh, over the past 10 years. That being said, there's some incredibly passionate people there and incredibly uh, special cars that are still hidden away. And you know, we've actually bought in the past a 355 Challenge, we've bought some other cars uh, and this car was basically hidden away for years. Now, uh, I asked him what he sell and he said, no, 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 we don't want to sell. My father bought the car in the late 1980s. He put it away and he basically is in love with this car. Now, I stayed in touch with this guy for almost, I would say, two years. And I would, you know, randomly send him a message. And one day, he basically posted a video of the car running. I got really excited because uh, I realized, okay, the car's running. Uh, it's, it's not a total, you know, it's not a total project. I need to learn more about this car. So as I did research, um, I noticed something really interesting about the car. And I noticed that it had these white badges on the rear uh, and the car was a touch lower uh, than normal and it had the side rockers. And as I started to look more at the photos, I realized that the car sort of reminded me of something and I didn't know what it was yet, but I knew that I had seen the car somewhere else. So. As time went on, we were back and forth and I told him I want the car, I want the car. And uh, I think it was like four or five months went by after that point. And one day he sends me a message and he says, okay, we're ready to sell the car. Now at the time, uh, you know, doing business between the US and Venezuela uh, can be a little tricky. Um, you know, obviously you can buy things out of Venezuela, but it is very scary to do. You have to be very careful. Things get stolen out of the port. A lot of things can happen. Um, so I was actually very cautious. So luckily I have a very good friend uh, that, that has a ton of experience in import and export in Venezuela. Uh, he moves cars, he moves all these different things. So he basically told us he would help us. Um, so we started negotiating and we went back and forth on the price. Uh, I was actually paying a lot for the car because I knew I had a great home for the car and I knew finding a 3,000 mile Countach downdraft was very hard to find. Uh, the other thing that I fell in love with the car is 
every time I spoke to him, this gentleman and his family started sending me more documents and more paperwork. And he told me that he had documents from basically new. Every single thing, correspondence with the Lamborghini factory, correspondence buying parts, uh, import records, he had everything. Um, and every time he sent me a new piece of document, my price probably went up like $5,000. Um, and we went, ended up on, I think at the time, probably almost a world record price, but a very fair price considering the miles. We ended up having to put the car in a container. Um, there's these insane photos, which we'll post, of the car basically being hidden. I was being you know, shipped out of Venezuela, put into a can container and shipped into Miami. I have to say we were, almost terrified um, because you never know with these situations uh, what could happen. There's a lot at risk, a lot, you know, happening. Now, once the car arrived to the Miami port, um, I got a weird phone call and I was actually told that someone had actually picked up the container somehow and it wasn't actually us. So for about two hours, I almost threw up. Um, because I didn't know if it was a mistake or if someone actually tried to steal the car. Um, it ended up being a massive mistake. Uh, the container was sort of misplaced, which is shocking when you think about the world today uh, and technology, it should never happen. But the container was misplaced. Um, we ended up finding, we ended up getting the car, getting it here. Um, and once we got it here, it was just so cool to see everything. Um, we'll show you guys uh, I think this car was presented away like no other Countach I've ever seen. This gentleman actually built like this shrine, uh, like, you know, Ark, <laughs> Ark of the Covenant type box for the car with everything from the original window sticker, or the original books, the original correspondence when he used to buy parts from the factory. Um, every little thing detailed on this car in this beautiful box. And I've never seen anyone do this, mind you. And I've, we've we bought and sold well over a hundred Countaches. Um, and it was really special. You could tell he just loved the car. And we saw it was really just beautiful. Um, you know, original paint, original interior. It needed a lot of little love uh, and really needed everything mechanical. The car had been sitting for a long time. Uh, we ended up pulling the engine. Uh, going through the carburetors, gaskets, seals, and everything, and we're almost done. Uh, we've done tires, suspension bushings, etc. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. I'm adjusting the carburetors on this infamous Venezuela Countach. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a nice story behind this car. I had the opportunity of seeing this car when I was a little kid in Caracas, Venezuela, um, 15 years later, I'm working on it. It was the only Countach we had in the country. One owner, a very low mileage car. I took the engine out, full service, suspension, AC, upgrade, interior, redone, and um, basically everything brakes and it's going to a very very passionate Countach collector he has another white red Countach and, and I basically told him he had to buy this car now in this process we discovered something so cool about this car and this is where the story gets even better so when I was looking at that car originally I saw these side rockers and I saw the white badges on the back and I realized I had seen it before and where I had seen it is probably in one of the most iconic Lamborghini photos of all time it's this black Lamborghini Countach that's sort of lowered. It's in the beach somewhere in Fort Lauderdale and there's a girl in a bikini, a, I think it's a black bikini and she's getting into the car and there's some great photos of her standing by the door, et cetera. And this is that actual car. When going through the paperwork, we realized uh, that it had a few differences when that photo was taken, we found original photos of the car, realized that he had changed them over time, and he actually purchased the car in Fort Lauderdale in 1988. So this was the actual car. It was a black downdraft, the same wheels, the same everything. It's that actual car. And then what we learned later was that this car was also featured on the cover of a magazine uh, when it was in uh, Fort Lauderdale, when it was new. It was shot for Sports Car International. We got a copy of the magazine, uh, so we'll definitely put up those photos. So definitely one of the more interesting Countach stories ever. So imagine finding this, you know, million dollar Countach in Venezuela, hidden away for 30 plus years, uh, you know, a fear of it getting stolen, 
putting it in a container with bananas and whatnot, whatever else, having to cover it, almost getting the car lost or stolen at the port, and then finding out it's probably one of the most famous Kundashes of all time, 3,000 original miles. This story doesn't get much better. I'm super excited to finish it. We're super excited to share it with you guys very soon. Uh, but anyways, we will, uh, we're, we're sort of planning the countdown to finish it early next year. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and that's the story of the Venezuela Countach.